All right, what's up, yo? About to get into this Splice XLN Audio collab. I'm just gonna do some uh, drum programming. We're gonna see what that RC20 do, and here we go. All right, how are we feeling about that? I like where this is going. I'm just gonna start recording some actual percussions. It's one of my secret techniques for recording hi hats. Get the brush out. I get the chimped out. And you just go real delicate. We're just about there. I say we're sixty percent there. But with the RC on this, this is what I usually do with my kicks. I'll like start with the vinyl one setting, and then I'll kind of just like tweak from there and take down some of the wobble. This honestly doesn't even need the wobble. It's a kick. Come on. Yeah, we can do one trick with the uh, with the kick that I've been doing, a little kick preset that I made a while ago. But I like getting the, the cassette sound going and following what the kick is doing, just to kind of bring a little bit of high end into the mix when the kick is hitting. I love this crunch on the kick. It sounds great. But another thing I've been doing with the kicks is I'll just I'll bring that width down a little bit as well. And also, if you want like a crazy low end on the kick, you can add like the the little like notch here to get a get like a real boost going. But I usually keep it pretty pretty basic with that, and then I'll try this trick out for you guys, and you can listen along. Now, um, I'm going to do the same trick, actually, but it's going to be on one of the claps. We've got this clap track here. Sweet, let's get some percussion. More, more, more. No, I like that shit. So that's how it's done using uh, XLN Audio RC20. I use it on everything, pretty much. Sometimes the master. Usually I'll use it on the master when it's uh, like I'm building samples as opposed to like building full beat like this. But let's play around with it. Why not? A bit more of that air distortion. It's just it's starting to sound really, really thick now. I'm going to bounce this out and send it along to the next fine producer. All right, so I'm gonna go through the sounds. These are the, the drums. And so I added a small little break, uh, probably right here, just to make it feel full. So RC20 uh, plugin, uh, I added it to the bass, just cause you know, I, I didn't really have a per specific purpose behind it, but I had the vinyl one modified. It's one of my favorite go-to presets. I always modify it whenever I'm like, you know, working on like small little little touch details. This is what it sounds like with the bass. The very next thing I did was I added the tom. I have a tom for my uh, drum sculptor. Uh, it's a synthesizer that's uh, based on uh, drum synthesis used all from tools in Ableton Live. And I combined it on top of frequency shifter. So you have this weird like frequency that's like, you know, shifting the, the frequencies of like the, the drums to tune in a totally different way. So this is what it sounds like. I have a lot of the distortion cranked on crunch and uh, have a lot of the wobble a little bit of magnetic but it's all just you know taste no particular way again vinyl one preset so it's making it sound a lot more now if you take the rc20 off it sounds more like kind of tame so rc20 just made it more in your face so and then you got the crazy chords that i added in vinyl one again but it's all modified you know 
I want it to sound like very like eerie in a way. So this is what it sounds like. Very dusty and very like like as if it's being you know recorded off of a vinyl record. But same again, preset vinyl one. Last detail, I added like a small little riser synth with uh, RC20 on it as well. Again, it, sh it should be transmitting from space. That's another really cool one. I like to use it to create like airy texture, uh, you know, to be able to like build more ambience to my sounds. Uh, so this is what it did. So yeah, I added that to this uh, crazy synthesizer I decided to kind of create at the moment. Without it, but with RC20, it's more like, like it's completely mangled. And the last thing was the uh, triangle, which already had RC20 recorded into it. It's uh, one of my sound packs I have in my volume three sound pack. All of it together sounds like this. got the beat from Count and Mr. Ellis. Very excited to add my part. We got some drums, we got some keys, we got some sound effects. So this first thing I'm gonna do is a tip for many of you out there who are using splice and using any sort of loop-based material where you've been given a stereo track with nothing else, meaning you don't have a multi-track, you don't have the kick or the snare separated. I already know that I'm gonna to wanna to sidechain my parts. So this is a good technique to recreate the kick and it's actually fairly basic, but it's a cool step, so let's get into it. I'm actually going to make my own kick following the kick from the beat. And we're actually not gonna even hear this kick drum. It just needs to be a short kick to trigger the side chain. So we're gonna paste that kick right here at the top. There's another one. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect because we're actually not gonna be hearing this kick. It's just to cause the ducking to happen in the right place. Cool. Nice, Mr. Ellis, that bass is super nice behind the beat. Awesome. So now that this is finished, I have the ability to sidechain any of my keyboard elements with the kick drum, which is in this genre that just, you wanna be able to do that at any moment. My first uh, idea is probably gonna be some Rhodes thing. Here's the uh, Mark I from uh, Excellent Audio. Really nice uh, sampled Mark one, just like the one over here, but in the box. Before we go any further, I wanna give a little more sauce to this Rhodes. We're gonna grab RC20. This is one of the kind of greatest plugins of all time. It's just got six really incredible modules and a bunch of parameters that you can manipulate to create vibe on your track, not just warped vinyl, but bit crushing, reverb, tape, saturation, filters. It's really an incredible plugin. So that's a preset obviously, and that already sounds awesome, but I'm gonna do some things to, first I'm gonna turn on follow because I don't want the uh, hiss to be going on while I'm not playing, but this way it'll trigger it. Nice. I'm also gonna turn it down. I might change it actually to like, uh, let's see. VHS machine has kind of a warbling white noise if I'm gonna turn it down. Now, wow and flutter. As you can see, I'll accentuate this so you can really see what's happening. Wow is when it's slowly changing the pitch. Flutter is gonna be when it's like for the roads. And in this context, I want it to be a little less obvious so it's gonna be more like a record that's warbling. So I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. Turn the speed up. Turn the distortion up. Maybe a little digital distortion. Add more of that hiss. I'm just gonna kinda jam around. You can see over here in this middle section I've left blank. That's because I was partying, but I also think I'm gonna have another element come there and kind of bring momentum to this very short one minute beat. 
things need to keep moving so that we stay focused on what's happening. Because we're actually gonna add a little more of that warbly sound with RC20. Once again, I'm gonna change the noise. So we're gonna go with tape. So that's just the addictive keys, same patches as right here above, but with the Valhalla Supermassive Reverb. This is a free reverb and it's ridiculously good. I just feel like some nice octaves will give it a vibe. It just gives it some nice ambience. Now what I wanna do is I'm going to add just a little bit of sidechain compression to the elements I've added. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna add the compressor side chain and we're gonna say kick SC and we're gonna bring that threshold down. We're gonna to listen to the Rhodes solo and see how that sounds. All right, that's about all I think I should add in the context of four producers handing this around. And I myself am really curious to hear how this thing sounds in the very end. My name is Keely. I produce and release music as Dressage, and I'm super excited to be the fourth and final producer on this Pass the Beat collaboration. I have just been handed this like mirage of beautiful keyboard parts and synth ideas. There's already a lot going on in this. I don't know exactly what I'm going to add yet, but I am going to think that it will be vocal based. <laughs> Eleven creates these take lanes, which is awesome. So I can like kind of create a little comp here. So I like how I sang this part. I don't really like the end of it, but I'm gonna pull that up to our comp. Let's see what else we have. Well, that's cool. Let's develop that a little bit. RC20 has a filter in it, so I usually will roll off highs because I think it makes it sound more retro and cool. So I'm going to slice all of these guys to a drum rack. Good boy, not. The most th fun thing about music production to me is letting go of all the rules and just going in and tweaking parameters. I almost want it to sound like a submarine underwater. Found for the second. It's kind of a cool lyric. Let's try it. Let's double and triple that. That's cool. I would never sing that naturally, but by taking something that I sang naturally and reversing it, um, and then maybe changing the pitch of some notes, like I come up with melodies I would never have come up with mentally first. I'm gonna add a low octave. We all lost and found for a second. Something Brandy would have sung in the 90s. I'm here for it. Let's do like five more of those. That's dope. This is another thing from XL and I love addictive keys. I found this cool woody pizzicato modern upright piano. And what I wanted to do was just highlight this melody. Pretty plucky. Going back there. I like to feel like Stevie Nicks and hold this one. So I'm gonna do it. 
is I wanted to bring in some of my samples that I have through Splice. <laughs> Just helped kind of suck the song into the end. All right, let's see what you've got. Jay is crazy. That progression is amazing. I knew you guys were gonna write something crazy, but that is next level. Collectively, that is insane. <laughs> That's insane. Vocals are killing, bass, drums, all the production, everything sounds really, really cool. It's so fun to have this experience of passing this beat around because I feel like for us producers, most of the time we're taking it to from start to finish ourselves. And it's clear here when you're working with all the right people, you can do a little bit, pass it on and have something that sounds completely unique. I love the vocals too. Kind of like a mix between like a lead vocal and uh, and like background vocals that sat perfectly with the beat. I love the textures that everybody brought and the different sort of palettes and musicality. I think that we all really complemented each other very well. And I'm just very grateful to be on a track with these, with these legends. I'm gonna have to put this shit out. Uh, thanks guys. Peace.